Thank you all for joining us um, for the Quaker College, traditional Quaker College fair happening today. Um, we're gonna have a chance to hear from the different colleges and then split into breakout rooms, uh, which you can join to have a chance to meet representatives and ask them specific questions and get to know the college personality a little bit better. Um, if you have any questions regarding the technicalities of the breakout rooms, feel free to ask those in the chat. And of course, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, uh, noting your name, uh, maybe what year you're in, if you're in high school, um, and, and what school you go to. Um, so without further ado, um, I'd like to introduce Kyle Wooden, the Associate VP of Enrollment Management at Guilford, to start us off with a brief intro. Kyle? Thank you, Becca. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, as Becca mentioned, my name is Kyle. Um, I've been at Guilford for about eight years now in the Office of Admission. I'm also a Guilford College graduate. Uh, Guilford was founded in 1837 by the Society of Friends, and we're located in the third largest city uh, in the great state of North Carolina, which is Greensboro. Incredibly proud of our Quaker roots. And we're proud to say we're the oldest co-educational institution in the South. Uh, so as it currently stands, we have about 1,200 full-time traditional age, and traditional age at Guilford is defined as an 18 to 23-year-old. Uh, with 80% of them living on campus all four years. So that tells you you're going to get that college atmosphere that you're looking for, even though we're a small, uh, close-knit community. Um, we have 40 undergraduate majors on campus. Our most popular programs right now are business administration, sports management, uh, health science, biology, and psychology. Uh, some of our more unique programs, more specific to Guilford, include sustainable food systems. We actually have a sustainable farm on campus. Uh, that supports our, our uh, vegetables in our cafeteria, experience design and peace and conflict studies. Um, and one of the unique um, facts about Guilford is we're, we're, we're team-based advising. So when you apply to, to colleges, oftentimes you'll indicate a, um, a major of interest rather than assigning you an academic faculty member uh, within that particular major, knowing that most students like to dabble around and, and potentially change their major, all first year students at Guilford receive a Guilford guide. And Guilford guides are full-time staff members that are solely dedicated to advising first year students. They're also mentors and the guides uh, allow kind of our first year students at Guilford to have the necessary support they need to succeed academically and socially um, during their first year in college. And the guides are, you know, a major piece to our team-based advising approach that we have at Guilford, which features them, an upperclassman advisor, a faculty advisor, and an alumni mentor. Um, off the top of my head, I don't want to share all of our secrets because I want some of you to come to my breakout room. So I'll, I'll leave it at that. And I appreciate the opportunity and hope to speak with you all soon. Thank you, Kyle. Um, I'll also note that there are a couple of Guilford students on the call today. Um, Katie and Avery, do you want to introduce yourselves quickly um, and just note that you'll be joining Kyle? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Katie Farr. I use she, her, hers pronouns. I'm a second year at Guilford. Um, I'm a member of the Quaker Leadership Scholars Program and I work at the uh, Friends Center as a fellow. Hi, I'm Avery. I'm a third year. I also use she, her, her pronouns. And I'm also a QLSP scholar and a Friend Center Fellow. Um, I'm a Religious Studies major and a Sociology Anthropology major with a minor in poli -fi. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, so next, I'd like to introduce Truth Garrett, the admission, admissions counselor from Antioch College. Uh, Truth? Peace, peace. Thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. My name is Truth Garrett, and I'm representing Antioch College. We are located in the very small village of Yellow Springs, Ohio. We are a very small liberal arts college. Um, we are known for our co-op, um, which is the opportunity for students to have hands-on experience um, outside the classroom. And we are also known for our self-designed degrees. Um, so all of our degrees are self-designed. I am actually a graduate uh, class of 2020. I am a teacher also. My major was in hip hop education. So I took um, my love for music and my love for education and I uh, take core curriculum and I put it into um, rap music for youth. Um, one of the things I would like to highlight is that we um, currently offer a full tuition scholarship for students that qualify for Pell Grants. Um, and we also have other um, uh, merit scholarships and grants available. I myself only um, paid $9,000 altogether for my um, entire education, but that was a that was from applying for grants and scholarships. So any opportunities, I suggest that you do that. 
Um, we look for change makers. Our students have a lot of um, opportunity to participate in um, the governing bodies of our campus. We have two students that sit on the board of trustees and just about everywhere that there can be some kind of leadership role on campus, we offer that to our students. Um, that's really pretty much what I can think of right now. I know we had three minutes, but um, I just look forward to speaking with others in the breakout room. Thank you. Thank you so much, Truth. And I love that background. Um, next, I'd like to invite um, Adam Lowry, the Senior Director of Admissions at Wilmington College. Adam? Hi there, thank you. So my name is Adam. I um, <clears throat> have been at Wilmington College for 12 years. Uh, it is a uh, located in Wilmington, Ohio, a small town not too far, about 40 minutes down the road from Truth. Uh, and, and Wilmington was founded in 1870 uh, by Quakers to uh, really be a, a teaching uh, education uh, centered institution. Uh, through those early days, we've grown and added 23 additional majors. Uh, two that I want to highlight, our agriculture program is very unique. And our sport management program is uh, recognized as, as one of the best for small colleges. And because of those programs um, and others that have a very hands-on focus, we have really situated our, our institution as a career-oriented, liberal arts, hands-on education. And so all of those things kind of wrap around together uh, to give students a very unique experience on our campus. We are uh, just under 1,000 students right now and uh, have a plan for growth. We need to add new students. We have a, a energetic president that has goals um, to it really expand and underserved and underrepresented populations of students as well. And so one thing I will highlight is this fall, we started our Scholars of Promise program. It is a co-curricular program for underserved and underrepresented students. It offers both scholarship as well as academic uh, and non-academic based programming all throughout the four years focused on developing uh, multicultural leaders. And so that program is new and unique. We have uh, great scholarship opportunities. Would love to talk more about that. Uh, what I will mention, uh, because our agriculture program is very unique, uh, we do have 267 acres of farm ground. We have livestock and crop operations to uh, educate on both production agriculture as well as uh, a new concentration in regenerative agriculture that just started uh, next next fall semester will be our first cohort in that program as well. So I'll let anyone that wants to join, um, we'll, we'll have a great conversation about what it's like to be a student at Wilmington College. Last thing I'll mention, uh, we do have a lot of student athletes, about 40% of our students come to campus to participate in athletics. Thank you, Adam. Um, welcome. And uh, next, I, I'm excited to welcome Susan Hillman de Castaneda from Earlham College. She's the Director of International and Transfer Admissions. Susan? Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Thanks so much for coming. I'm Susan Hillman de Castaneda, Director of International Admissions, Alumni Recruitment. I work with transfer students and our Quaker students. Earlham was founded in 1847 in Richmond, Indiana. So again, in the Midwest, not too far from Antioch and Wilmington. And um, we have about 700 students coming from 45 states and over 60 countries. 18% of our students are international, which is, makes a, for a wonderful, diverse campus. Another 23% of our students are domestic multicultural students. So as a Quaker school, we really focus on being a collaborative learning community supporting and challenging our students, intentionally creating opportunities for them to have transformative opportunities and experiences on campus, in the community, around the world. Um, our professors love being with our students. They like really get excited when our students come back to campus. Students create their um, four-year path through college, choosing a major by the end of their second year. You can major, double major, minor. We have these really cool applied minors across disciplines. And we do have a program called EPIC, which um, we have centers for social justice, global health, entrepreneurship, innovation and creativity, environmental leadership. And you have a guaranteed um, $5,000 for an internship or research opportunity one time. And that's in addition to your financial aid. Um, a lot more to say. Come visit me in my breakout room. Thanks.
Thank you, Susan. Um, next, uh, I'd like to welcome Kara Strong, the Vice President of Enrollment Management at William Penn University. Uh, Kara? Good afternoon. It's great to be here. William Penn University is located in Oskaloosa, Iowa, which is about an hour southeast of Des Moines, our state capital. Um, we were founded in 1873 by Quaker pioneers, and present day we have uh, over a thousand students on our main campus. We also have distance learning and online options available as well. Um, our campus uh, is a pretty diverse student body. We have over 40 states and nearly 30 countries represented. Um, and diversity, not only geographic, but uh, ethnic diversity um, and also religious diversity, which adds to our campus life and, and campus discussion. Um, we are very participation driven, so we do offer athletics as well as fine arts, uh, including marching band, uh, music, drama, and campus ministry options, uh, not just for participation, but also for scholarship. Um, we have 32 majors available. Our most popular include business, education, sport management, and exercise science. Uh, we also offer two graduate programs, the Master of Organizational Leadership and a Master of Sport Management. Some of our more unique academic programs include our new media program, um, which includes uh, filmmaking and uh, different video production aspects, and also our industrial technology, which um, can lead to uh, secondary education, industrial technology, industrial management, um, or three plus two agreements with Iowa State University for mechanical, civil, and industrial engineering. So um, I have a lot to share. So I hope that some of you join me in the breakout room a little bit later. Thank you, Kara. Welcome. Um, next, I'd like to invite Katerina Karis Flores, an admission counselor at Brimar College, to uh, give a brief intro. Katerina? Great. Uh, thanks, Becca. Hi, everyone. It's so great to meet you all today. Uh, my, like I said, uh, like Becca said, my name is Katerina Karis Flores. I am an admissions counselor at Bryn Mawr College, and I also graduated uh, from Bryn Mawr in 2020. I am the admissions representative for New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Latin America and the Caribbean. So to give a brief overview of Bryn Mawr, we are a women's college, and we're uh, we are also part of the Seven Sisters uh, Coalition. So we are located about 20 minutes away from the city of Philadelphia and Pennsylvania. So Bryn Mawr was founded in 1885 by Quakers and also during a time when women's education was not prioritized in society. At Bryn Mawr, it isn't about the absence of men, it's about the presence of women. So being at a women's college is definitely a unique experience, you know, from a rigorous academic, supportive and empowering community and strong traditions, Bryn Mawr students and alumni learn how to be bold, dynamic and agents of change in our communities. So in addition, we have about 1400 undergraduate students. Our average class size is about 14 students and our student to faculty ratio is eight to one. So at Bryn Mawr, you also have a very interdisciplinary and personalized education since we're also a liberal arts college. So we have more than 35 majors and more than 50 minors and concentrations to choose from. So in, addi in addition, we have more than um, 150 different clubs and activities as well. So in addition to the numerous areas of studies uh, offered at Bryn Mawr, you also have access to three other Quaker colleges in the area as a Bryn Mawr student. So we have partnerships with Haverford College, Swarthmore College, and the University of Pennsylvania, and this makes up the Quaker Consortium. So each of these colleges are co-ed minus Bryn Mawr, but you have access to the thousands of unique classes offered at each institution, in addition to participating in any clubs and activities that they have. So I'm excited to chat with anyone uh, who wants to chat about Bryn Mawr today. And uh, yeah, thanks, Becca. Thanks, Katerina, welcome. Uh, next, um, I'd like to invite Sarah Jennings, admissions counselor at Haverford College, um, to do a brief intro and tell us a little bit about Haverford. Sarah? Thanks so much, Becca. Um, so I am Sarah Jennings. I'm an admissions counselor at Haverford. I also am a recent graduate of Haverford as well. Um, and I also grew up um, as a member of Abington Friends Meeting. Um, so it's so wonderful to be here and share this all with you. Um, so it's great going right after Bryn Mawr because there's a lot of similarities in terms of the Quaker Consortium, um, as was mentioned. So Haverford is located just down the street from Bryn Mawr, um, uh, just outside of Philadelphia. We're eight miles outside and the train stop into Philadelphia is right off of the driveway to campus. So students love, you know, having 
course opportunities in the city, just going for fun, um, as well as like getting involved in community service and other um, organizations. Uh, we are primarily a residential community. Um, so 98% of students live on campus as well as 40% of faculty. So campus is really the center of all of student life and all of community at Haverford as well. Um, and Haverford is a smaller school, so about 1,400 students. Um, really that small liberal arts model, you know, making the most of it with 20% class sizes and really close mentorship with faculty available. Um, but as was mentioned about the Quaker Consortium, um, we really utilize our partnerships with Bryn Mawr College, Swarthmore College, and the University of Pennsylvania. So 50% of Haverford students in any given semester are taking classes outside of Haverford's campus. You can major at Bryn Mawr, you can use Swarthmore's libraries, take classes at Penn. Free transportation is provided to all campuses um, and social life and sense of community extends across as well. So you have your identity as a Haverford student, um, but you really have the benefits of both a small liberal arts model, but also the resources and community of a much larger university as well. Um, so Haverford was founded in 1833 by the Religious Society of Friends. Um, and really what I wanna highlight most is the emphasis on student voice. And we're, we really connect that at Haverford to our Quaker history. Um, so that's seen in a number of ways. That's seen how kind of the community is set up and the, the institution is run. So we have consensus-based committees are running all of the major decisions and future planning at Haverford. Um, and Haverford students are on every single one of these committees. So for instance, just this past year, we hired a new Dean of Students um, and two Haverford students were sitting on that committee. And with the consensus-based process, their voice obviously held equal weight to everyone else in the room, faculty, administrators, and staff members included. Uh, we also really emphasize that Quaker value of every voice having equal weight in the community through the honor code. So I can't mention Haverford without mentioning the honor code. Um, this is an entirely student run honor code um, at Haverford and really sets up the values of trust, concern and respect as central elements to our community. Um, so this affects both academic and social life. Um, and so we have plenary, the entire community coming together twice a year to really set up the goals and intentions for the community as well as trust with faculty. So for instance, unproctored exams. Um, and then finally mentioning the student thesis, um, excuse me, senior thesis, um, where all students are required to complete a culminating project at the end of their time at Haverford, again, really focusing student voice and that individualized education and that close mentorship that you get with a professor. So you get to do research at the graduate professional level um, that a lot of students don't get the opportunity to until um, graduate school, for instance, but we're making sure that every student at Hartford has access to that element and that opportunity. Um, so I'm so happy to talk about how ethical leadership is central at Haverford, student voice, um, and all different pieces um, in breakout rooms, if any of you would like to join me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Sarah. Welcome. Um, and lastly, I'd love to uh, introduce Windsor Jordan, Associate Dean of Admissions and Director of Access and Equity at Swarthmore College, to share a little bit about Swarthmore. Uh, Windsor? So good to be with you all uh, this, this morning, or this afternoon, excuse me, and to follow my tri-college uh, friends at Hereford and uh, at Bryn Mawr. I like because I'm Windsor Jordan, I'm Associate Dean of Admissions, Director of Access and Equity in Class of 2007 uh, from Swarthmore College. Uh, Swarthmore is a small liberal arts college located right outside of, of Philadelphia. We're a campus of 1,600 students, but we have 40 plus different majors. Uh, we give you access to everything in the natural sciences, humanities, social sciences, and engineering that you want to have access to uh, with the options to design your own major uh, uh, as well. Um, a couple of unique things about our curriculum I'd like to raise up for folks. The first semester for all first year students at Swarthmore is pass fail. Our first year students don't receive any grades at the end of their first semester as a first year student. So it gives you a chance to explore those 40 plus different majors, to acclimate the college life uh, and to figure out what your path uh, is gonna be uh, academic, but you don't pick majors at Swarthmore until the end of your sophomore year. So plenty of time to kind of figure out what your path is gonna be. So the first semester at Swarthmore is pass fail. That's pretty, uh, really unique. At the heart of a, a Swarthmore uh, is our uh, commitment to access, equity, uh, and inclusion and affordability. This comes uh, from our Quaker heritage as, as well. 
Um, that we, I will speak quickly to the, the access piece. Uh, we are a cash-free campus, and this means that students don't pay for any events, speakers, lectures, uh, parties, performances that they go to on our campus. There's no door fee for those type of events, and that's true at Swarthmore. It's also true to the, to the social events or parties or performances you go to at Bryn Mawr in Haverford as well on the shuttles that take you to those other campuses only about 20 uh, minutes away. Um, uh, we also uh, want to make sure students have the chance to come visit Swarthmore if they want to as well. So we also have a fly-in program for my folks who are juniors, uh, high school juniors currently are going to be seniors in the fall. Uh, we do have a fly-in program called Discover Swarthmore. The application went up in April 1st, so you can apply right now. Uh, and if you're accepted to Swarthmore, we'll bring you from wherever you are uh, 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 to uh, Swarthmore's campus to spend a couple nights, kick the tires, see if Swarthmore is a place you want to live and learn at. Uh, for four years. Uh, so that's called Discover Swarthmore. I'll put a link uh, in, in the chat uh, for that as well. But you can come learn more about Swarthmore in my breakout room. I can tell you a lot more about what makes Swarthmore uh, unique. Amazing. Thank you so much, everyone, for those intros. Um, this is now the exciting moment when I will open the Zoom rooms um, and everyone has a chance to join a Zoom room and join multiple over time and just speak with these um, representatives of these different schools. So the way this is going to work um, is you should receive a message prompting you to join a breakout room. The breakout room will be named with the college's name, so that's, that shall be, should be pretty evident. Um, and uh, you'll be able to select the room you want to join. So feel free to visit multiple rooms and kind of go between um, uh, the rooms. And if you have any questions, of course, DM me. And there will be a PYM staff person in the um, main room, this one, um, at all times to answer any questions or to kind of make sure you're getting to the right place. So without further ado, I'm going to open up the rooms. Um, and we'll, uh, yeah, um, hope everyone has some good conversations. <laughs> 